Welcome back. You guys are welcome back. It's the show, the movie review and TV series. So let's just kick, kick, get right into it. Um, we will be talking about Coma. Coma and the movie Coma and the movie Fatal Affairs. And with me will be Afam, the movie plug. He will be joining us very soon. Um, sorry, we were having a little technical difficulties. Questions relating to Fatal Affair, Coma. Okay, we here he is. Afam, how are you doing? Hey, what's up? What happened yesterday now? Because of you, you not have this show. Yeah. Was it yesterday or day for yesterday? Today is, today is Sunday, right? It was supposed to be on Friday. Yeah, it was. Because of some, you know. Yeah. But here we are. That's the most important thing. So let's just go straight into it. We're talking about coma and... What's the second one? Fatal Affairs. Fatal affair, yeah. So we have the good and the bad. So let's tackle the bad first before we start talking about the good, which is Fatal Affairs. According to you, your own opinion. Ugh. Why do you think the movie Fatal Affair? Let me even just give them a brief summary of what the movie is talking about. Fatal Affair is talking about a lady who was having challenges with her marriage and then she bumped into her ex. And this ex <laughs> who had a serial motive. Um, affair that he was planning to have with this lady. Uh, but unfortunately for her, what she was expecting in him was not what she got. So that's just a brief summary of what the movie was talking about. So we'll be expecting Afam to break it down to us, for us, into bits so that we can understand what exactly went wrong in that movie. Okay. Alright, kick off, bro. Okay, so um, Fatal Affair is uh, a story that has been told so many times. We have so many movies about it. There's uh, and one particular movie that a lot of people remember is Obsession. Obsession, which uh, featured the um, thing that was Beyonce. And, um, Beyonce, yeah. And was it Idris Elba? Well, anyway. Um, yeah, Beyonce. Yeah, so it's a movie that has been told. It's a story that has been told so many times. Now, now the thing is, um, in the current climate of Hollywood, they do a lot of repeat movies you know they repeat storylines you see them readapting a, a a movie into a tv series or a tv series into a movie i mean the recent uh, the series we talked about last time i think we talked about snow yes we did okay so snow was, was, was it was a series was that was adapted that from a movie you know so the yeah. we have these uh, remakes reboots you know but now, here is the thing. If, if you are going to retell a story that has been told so many times, I think okay. that you have to bring something new into it, even though it's an old story. Uh, and you have to bring maybe a new element, something that no one has seen. Now, as someone, okay. uh, the director of the movie, I think they chose the wrong person to write direct the movie. And I think personally that the man must have had a very similar experience. You know, uh, maybe he was the one who was obsessed with someone or someone was obsessed with his wife. I don't know, but... So he decided to make... Yeah, because movie. the movie, he he, uh, he directed a movie which was released last year. The name of the movie was... Um, I think it was um, Secret Obsession. Yeah, I think it okay. was Secret Obsession. Yeah, Secret Obsession. And it was exactly the same movie. So, I don't get okay. it. So, the man, he he did a movie, he directed a movie with the same storyline last year. And then he's doing the same thing again this year. It, and he it, isn't bringing it, you know anything. Why I think that, you know why, you know why it happened? You know why it, that happened? I think it's because of the pressure that uh, Netflix is currently facing with having to deliver content this lockdown period when everyone is at home. So they are forced to just push out materials that naturally would not have, you know, gone through. I feel that my own opinion, though. No, because but, but um, Netflix, Netflix, these movies, they were not shot this year. 
they these are movies that they shot. Nasty. Yeah, so it's not like I see um, uh, they started shooting movies this lockdown period and they're rushing to shoot a movie, then they will not release it. So I don't think that's the issue. Now my my problem my problem is that with this movie, you know, you you can do something, you can r- write a mediocre story. But it is the delivery that counts. Um, let me let me take you to extraction. Extraction is a story about a mercenary who went to see the kid. This is a story that has been told yeah. so many times. You know, we've also there are stories, uh, uh, movies that uh, uh, we have. Maybe the, the protagonist, the actor, the, the main guy, he is uh, going out on a revenge. You know, maybe they killed his wife or, or they killed his dog, like John Woo. Yeah. You know, so a Rambo. Uh, uh, Rambo. You know, but. You have to bring something new. John Wick is a movie. They killed his his dog. He's going out for revenge. We read that story so many times. But the difference is sure. the elements that are now brought into John Wick's story. And now they created a whole assassin universe, a whole economy. They have their well, currency. Yeah. They have they have their tailoring. They have their hierarchy. They have their language. You know, they have their language. The hierarchy. They have their levels. They have the the people in charge. They have the they even have a factory that makes their currency and that one has its own ecosystem too. So you see that they are telling the same story but they are bringing in but there was a lot of the execution. making it so exotic. So the first of all, the first problem with Fatal Affair was we're telling a story that has been told so many times and not bringing anything new. Now, the second thing that was wrong with the movie was the performance of the actors. I mean, Nia Long is yeah. someone we love. Omar Epps is someone we love. These are people that have been doing well. And they've been in the game for a very long time. Yeah, they've been doing it. And they that, were disappointing. Nia Long is a great actress. Omar Epps is good. I mean, but he is not someone to play a bad guy. In fact, um, if you look at um, what's this um, my boy's name again, this guy with the that was in Beyonce's um, music video. This black guy that has played the creep so many times. He's he's good at it. He he can play it without actually looking creepy. Oh my ex was actually looking creepy. I mean, you know, the, the, you, you want him to be a bad guy. You want him to have this type of presence that makes your skin crawl, but you don't want him to look creepy. He doesn't want him to look creepy. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, okay. yeah, it, it's... I mean, we, we've seen a lot of bad guys in movies and they've done some horrible things. But for some reason, we love them still. I mean, some people like these True. bad guys. Yeah, but I was really disappointed with my... He, he, he overdid the creepy thing and he made it look like as if it is yeah. who he is, you know? It, the acting was terrible. True. Near long, it seemed like as if her heart wasn't her heart wasn't in it. Her daughter, her husband, and then they were just so. Many there was no connection. Yeah, were, it was flat. The acting was flat. It was really. Flat. I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, it was really uh, flat. It's, then, it's, okay, it's, there, there, there's this scene that was really stupid. Okay, actually, there were two scenes that were really stupid. The first one was okay. The point where her husband and she. We are running away from Omar Epps. Now, she she stabbed him. She stabbed him. She did. She stabbed him in, in, with a knife, kitchen yes. knife. And then, and then they ran away. And they ran away. But he came back again. No, okay, now. They were running away from him. She was helping her husband run away. And then, at some point, her husband was no longer behind her. We don't know where he went. But Omar, Hep, Omar Epps came and accosted her. And then the husband came from nowhere. I mean, you are running, you, your, your life is in danger. Your wife's life is in danger. She's right in front of you. And for some reason, you take your eyes off your wife who could die if you are not there to protect her. He, he just vanishes. And they, only, they did that simply because they were trying to make the, you know, to get him to come in and rescue her. It, it was terrible. It was terrible. And then the other one, which was also um, really bad, was um, towards the ending, when 
they should after you know he had died and you know uh, I think police came or what. But they showed it. my um, sorry, me along her husband and the daughter, and they were all smiling and happy, and you know they were seeing her off. Maybe she was going back to college, and I'm like, wait. So this girl's boyfriend gets killed, probably in front of her. Her parents nearly get killed. She's traumatized. She was tied up, and they didn't even bother to show them trying to recover from said trauma. They just cut to when they just they're went all place. happy. I mean, the, uh, I don't know why the, the name of this movie eludes me, but um, um, what's her name again? That's my point. So, they've done this similar movie before. They've done a similar movie before. And she, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the movie. I, it will probably come to me eventually. But uh, it's a, it starred Rosario Dawson. She is the same, it, it was the same movie. They told her that she should, uh, uh, the police told her that, look, the best thing you can do if he comes back, her husband was killed. And they told her, if he comes back, um, give him a warning shot. Use bin bags, okay. and so that when the police come in, don't, it won't be that you intentionally killed him. Just give him a warning yeah. shot, and then uh, yeah. after that, use live rounds and kill him. So she said, "Okay, she'll do that," and she did that, and she killed him. But after the after all that, in the ending, she was now trying to recover from the trauma and what she yeah. went through. I mean, you can't just completely ignore the whole Jump the whole the plot just because you are trying to create a happy ending. You can also create a happy ending whilst also still um, uh, you know, following through with the story you have been trying Exactly. Following through with the story you have been trying to tell. But I don't know. The Fatal Affair was, was terrible. The acting, the, the soundtrack was... There was just nothing good about Sorry, it. Man. I know you said we're going to talk I, about I, the good and the bad. I, I still feel... I still feel uh, someone said the perfect guy. Yes, the perfect Peters. guy. Yes, that's the movie, the perfect guy. Yeah, that's the movie. Yeah. I, I still feel that movie was not supposed to come out, in my own opinion. The pressure, like I said earlier, on Netflix to put out content, even though they're, you know, sometimes these people give out contracts to producers to make movies, and when they do, they vet these movies. They don't just put it out. I'm sure that they were not planning to drop that movie, but they just had to. My own opinion, though, because the the movie had so much flaws, as in plot holes everywhere. But that's by the way. So let's go straight into the good, the juicy one. In your own definition, to me, though, I don't think Homer was that fantastic. I have my reasons, okay. but I'll I, I like to listen to yours first. Okay, okay. Before I um, move out my own. Here, here is a uh, oh, Homer. Here is why I liked Koma. Now, um, like I said, you know the. Even though Koma may seem like a unique story, you know, exploring the whole um, someone a comatose patient, exploring what they are doing while they're there, because you know, um, it's been documented that people wake up from coma and have strange um, skills or abilities that they didn't have before. By abilities, someone woke up from a coma and could speak fluent Mandarin, French, uh, sorry, Chinese. They could speak fluent, fluent Chinese. So now that's weird because the person has never been to China and didn't know a word of Chinese before the person went into a coma. Then um, there was someone who came out of okay. Uh, someone when I posted the um, the review, someone on my page said told us about uh, her. I think she said her friend or her cousin who came out of a coma and had a very beautiful voice. Now, the person she's talking about is the, if you watch, uh, I think it's America's Got Talent, there is this uh, singer who has uh, a lot of uh, bones on her face, who sang wow. very well. Yes, she was one of the survivors of the Sosoliso airline uh, plane crash. Okay. Yeah, so that's the person she's talking about. So apparently, according to her, this uh, the lady who was on America's Got Talent didn't have a very beautiful voice before uh, uh -huh, before the plane crash. But after the plane crash, she was in a coma. And when she came out of the coma, she had a very beautiful voice and went on to uh, feature in America's Got Talent. So now they, they, they try to put a unique spin on how 
you know, this is because possible. That, you know, because, because that, now you are in a coma. You are taken to somewhere else where if they are transported into uh, your body or your mind is transported into a place where you get to learn, you know, all that. You get the opportunity to learn something new. So imagine if uh, um, now the, the fantasy world that was created in the in the coma. Imagine if you were in a place that was filled with Chinese people, and maybe they, according to them, a year in coma could be a thousand years. You know, in that world, it would give an opportunity to learn fluent, uh, uh, yeah, fluent uh, Chinese. You know, so um, now we already know that a lot of stories can be retold over and over again, and we and we know that coma copied elements from inception, you know, and uh, well, okay. I well, I'll dare say the metrics, but I don't really, I don't really see the comparison. No, someone no, was saying, we, we did not go that far. I that. think someone the inception is perfect example. Yeah, someone was saying the metrics, but I don't think there was any comparison between those two. But anyway, um, yeah, it did copy some elements from inception, but with um, the coma, they tried to make it unique and what I like about it was the delivery. I didn't see the, the, the plot twist that eventually came. I didn't see it coming. Unlike uh, a movie like Fatal Affair, that there was no surprise. We all knew what was going to happen. We all knew when it was going to happen. And it happened as we expected it to happen. No surprises. No Because the, that particular story has been told over and over again. Exactly. That was why we could predict the whole thing till the end. Exactly. Exactly. But, but with so, Kuma, it was new. It was a fresh approach. Yeah, it was a fresh approach. Then... You know, and the, the, the I had I had, a, I had an issue with the with the voice though the voicing I, I think they did ADR for that movie because the the voice the sound was not telling it no, wasn't no, well it's, synced. It's not an it's not an American movie. It's a Russian movie, and Russian movies they don't oh, speak I English. See. They don't speak English. They speak Russian. Okay, so that was very yeah. So wrong. so the, so the, the, the lock is yeah. So it was dubbed. dubbed. It was it had it. What you watched is the English dubbed version. If you watch the Russian uh, version with English subtitle, then you understand that it's just yeah. Uh, so it's the did, English dub. Did you watch that version? No, no, no. I watched the English dub. I knew it was the, the Russian version movie. The English, the English uh, dubbed okay. version. I knew it was a Russian movie. I didn't want to watch the. I did, I mean, uh, I I like to hear a little Russian when I'm watching an American movie. I don't want to watch <laughs> a movie where they are speaking Russian. Oh, all yeah. true. Yeah. So. That's the that's the, that's the that, that I don't think that was a problem when you understand that it was a Russian movie, but um, the movie was okay. The the acting wasn't uh, uh on the level of Hollywood, but you know there were a few like um the what was this guy's name, the the guy who eventually turned Which into one? one of them, one of those um monsters. Um, Phantom. Yeah, Phantom. His acting wasn't all that great. His acting wasn't all that great. I wasn't impressed by his acting. But then the 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 bad guy, the bad guy, he was actually okay. And the, the main character, they were just trying to look for a pretty boy to be the face of the movie. The, the main, I wasn't too impressed with the acting of the main character. Yeah, it wasn't. That's um, um Yeah, it wasn't. But his story, his story was well told as it was yeah, well scripted yeah i, I don't know how he acted the, the, story the, story, was... the idea the concept of him being able to to transfer his knowledge as an architect from the real world into that um coma state yeah is beautiful so i i, I in the beginning the movie started off very very fast as you he, he's already in that state and then he's coming out of it and as he's trying to de- as he's trying to find out what's going on, we the audience are finding out exactly how as we are moving at the same pace with all the information he's acquiring, also getting that same information. So it, it, it's nice to see him find out things in the movie as though he's new, he's fresh. Unlike unlike in that um, um, fatal affairs, we already know that Nialong already knew. About he, in fact, she had more information about the guy than the guy himself, which yeah. is not. Is, she was like playing the code in the movie. But in this one, he didn't know anything. It was so bad that nobody in the movie knew what was going on except for the Phantom yeah. and um, um, Van. 
the bad guy. So, so we, we, it was interesting, it was refreshing to watch and to see him you know, grow and also develop his power. The only thing that stands out apart from the story is the, the abilities that they had, that they, that they gave them. Yeah. Apart from that, I think the story is a little bit far-fetched. <laughs> well, why I say so? If you think, if you think about the fact so. that, okay, go on, finish. Let me know what you're. Because um, those monsters, I don't know what they call them again. I've forgotten. Um, those monsters. It was assumed that they were created by the dead. Um, some of them that had died. So now the question is, which, because before you die, you have to have been eaten by the monster or touched by the monster. So how do you get the very first monster if all the people that went into coma was, well, all the monsters were created by people that went into the coma? No, 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 no. So you, 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 missed, you missed a little detail. It, what they initially said about the monsters is, there are people who are brain dead, but their families don't want to take them out of life support. Now, the whole world, the whole coma world, is made up of memories of people. And your memory, you come into it, and then your memory is what helps fill it up. Yeah, so now, you, if you are brain dead, then you turn into that. Because you are not... Your brain is dead, but you are connected, you are in a coma. So you are still in the world. So it's just that thing. Now you have no memories. That is just what you are. And those that are brain dead like that are seeking other people that are alive. I don't know, maybe to touch them, to get to, get to, to maybe for life or something. I don't know what. But they said that those things, they can sense other people that are alive, and then they go to them and they touch. When they touch you, you turn into them, slowly but gradually. Yes, they, they say they initiate um, a ne necrosis in your brain tissue or something. Well, whatever part of your body they touch, it starts, uh, it, your brain cells start dying it starts later and it spreads until you turn into one of them, so you also become brain dead. So it's not like as if, even if they don't touch you, if you on your own for some reason, your medical condition becomes really critical and you become brain dead, then you will turn into them without being touched. So it's not, you can only, you can't, they weren't just created by someone, by one of them touching you. You on your own can become one of them okay. without their help. Yeah, that's, that's their story. Okay. Yeah. So now, in that state, it's assumed that they don't know. They are dead, brain dead, right? They don't know why they are there. But guess what? When Phantom turned into one of those things, at the end of the movie, when he was supposed to kill the main character, he saw him and then he recognized him. And he, wasn't, he didn't do anything. As a matter of fact, he helped him out. Yeah. How do you explain that? Well, I think... Um, okay. Now, here is what I, I wanted to accept as what went on down. In the ending. Now, the man who told them that, you know, everything we know about the world was what that old man had told everyone. So yes. everyone was, was basing, crap. everyone was basing their knowledge on what he had told them. And that was what they were explaining as what the world was. He even told them that if you go into your dream, you will die. We told them that if you go into your dream, he stand a better chance of coming out of your coma. Okay, so I think that why uh, um, he was okay, he was telling them that they shouldn't go there, that they should not go near those things. Like those things touch you, you become brain dead, which is true. And he said that they are that they are in a vegetative state, and you know there's nothing they can do about them, but they are gone. And I don't think there's anyone that is brain dead that comes out of that. I think once you are gone, you are gone. But, you know, um, what was that his name again? Phantom. 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 Yeah. Phantom was actually aware of what was going on. He, throughout the movie. Yeah. He went he in knew. there. 
he went in there willingly. When they told, when he wanted to come out, he saw that he didn't have his legs, and I think one of his arms were gone. So he chose to be in there willingly. So I guess it's safe to say that even if he may have become brain dead, he was already self-aware of okay. the situation. So that may have been, and he knows, I think maybe um, is, is, there's a possibility that him being in that state, he may have been that man who did it to him. Yes, to make him that's stay the main, there. The yeah, to make him keep staying there. You know, so I don't know, but uh, 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 it, seemed, it seemed that he had a grudge against the man and not against anyone else. So he was just trying to okay. settle his grudge here. Yeah. But it is our, all, this is, this is our speculation. They didn't want to tell us exactly why it was the way it was. You know, but at least we know that uh, see, maybe he had not completely... I see them. You know, you, you, sorry, you know he... Um, when he killed the man, within that whole black thing, his face showed the shape of his face. So it could yeah. be that at that point, he had not completely lost it. He was almost there. Okay. Just a little bit of him was still left, which was why he left them. Maybe. We don't know. I see. But like I said, it's all speculation. That, that, Someone is asking yeah. you to call him. That's one of the plot holes I was talking about. That's one of the reasons why I... I feel they did not put in too much explanation to the movie. We, we, just like how the old man lied to them and they believe. That is how I feel the movie lied to me. And I'm and I'm expected to just believe it. Too. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't believe it all through. You know, I had questions. As a matter of fact, when I finished the movie, I went back, I took it back again to where the the, the main guy, Victor, came out of the Kuma states. I took it back there. I wanted to understand how he was able to do that on his own. Because he came out of it, and then they realized that he was out, and they took him back in. I yeah. don't know if you recall that part of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, well I think that um, for that one, you know, even though the, he was in a coma, or rather they induced him into a coma, the people come out of comas on their own. Don't forget that. True. Yeah, people come out of comas on True. their own. It mustn't be, they don't have to pull you out for you to True. come out of it. So it could simply be that he came out of it on his, on his own and then, you know, they put him back in. But then they showed him how to come out. So it, it, it was, let's, okay. let's so, say, it, it, when he came out, it was his body recovering and he came out. But the second time he had to come out, it wasn't a case of his body recovering. He had to find the exit himself. Okay, so if you had to rate this movie, um, what would you rate? What would you rate Coma? 7.0 over 10. 7 over 10. It was, it was, it wasn't, um... I'll give you, sorry? I'll give you 5. <laughs> That's because I'm generous. <laughs> I really did not enjoy the movie as much as you made it seem like the movie was like all that. I did enjoy that movie. As a matter of I fact, told maybe you, because uh, you your interest lies in <laughs> fantasy, science fiction, fantasy. Well, not fantasy or science fiction. That's science fiction. I did not enjoy. It. I, I like science fiction, but this, like I said earlier, this particular movie, I saw a lot of plot holes that were not explained. And they were just expecting us just to, like when the guy was training, for example, um, how was he able to master the powers in the first place? How how well, just like this, like they said, it's it's in the, it's in coma, they are in that world, and they are so you can't really explain most of what was going on. Most of the most of the things were just assumed that we were, were expected to just take them. So I, I I'm going to take them, but I'm still going to Reach them five, like I said earlier, over ten, and I'm not going to recommend it to anybody. To be sincere, yeah. When I I <laughs> I, I, I recommend I rated it seven over ten, and I reviewed the movie, posted the review. So you know, because it's a Russian movie, a lot of people haven't seen the movie, and um, they went to see it, and they came back, and a lot of them liked it. I don't remember reading any. There were, I think, the comments were more than fifty comments, 
And I don't remember anyone saying they didn't like the movie, you know, in the comments after watching it. Okay, no, one person said he didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah, one person said he didn't like it. But every other person they said I did not like it. Said they did. Apart the major apart from all my explanation, my first reason of it being dubbed, I don't like watching movies that the voice is slower than the action. Okay. It messes with my head. It no, makes me but when I watched it, I that's think why I don't watch the version you watched was different from the one I watched because um even though it's English dubbed, it was still flowing. Whenever the, it was flowing very well. So it must have been that the one you got there was a, it, it wasn't properly synced. The English the, the, the dubbing wasn't synced with the action that was going action, on. Yeah. yeah, but mine it was it went very fluidly. I didn't, in fact, yeah, guys, point where can, I didn't notice it. So you still have it, though. Yeah, it's, 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 it's available for, for sale, right? Yeah, it is. You can pick up all these movies we are talking about from, from um, our farm's movie plug. I beg, connect them all. Just head down to his page and get whatever movie you want to see from him. We do this every week. And we're apologizing once again for not being able to go live on Friday. Release on yeah, my generator spoils. This is this is Nigeria. Yeah, so it's expected. Um, yeah, I'm hoping we will do a series next week, um, but uh, Big Brother Nigeria is not letting me watch any other thing. The, on, on, <laughs> was it not on Friday? On Friday, I think they were it was okay. It was yesterday they did their party. Yes, Let's, they do their party. Let's hope That's they it. don't do their party on Fridays because it will affect. Yeah, it will. All right. Um, that's it. That's it. Um, thank you very much for staying tuned, guys. Um, we like I said earlier, we'll be doing this again next week. So join us same time. Hopefully, we will do it on time this time around. Friday, eight pm. Uh, any other any other thing you want to add? Um, no. Any last words or um. Unhinged is coming out on the 31st of August. So hopefully we'll talk about it then. Oh God. Sorry, 31st of July. July, sorry, July, July. July. Unhinged, starting there. Yeah, we'll be talking about it. Yeah. And he's right, a guys, psycho thank you in the very movie. Much. He's, a, he's a psycho in the movie. So it would be nice to see him play that part. I hope it's not going to look like Fatal Affair. What? Um, um, have we seen? Have I seen a Road Rage movie before? Yeah, I've seen a Road Rage movie. I know people didn't really watch that one. Um, the Hitcher. I liked it. What? Uh, there's a movie titled the Hitcher. the Hitcher. The movie was crazy. It's like a horror movie. I, the, there's this um, a serial killer who kills people on the road, and he was following this. Um, I think it was this a boy and his girl, this boy and his girlfriend, and they ran away from him, and he was just trailing them, and the man killed so many people. And if you see the way he killed the boyfriend, man, <laughs> oh my god, he tied. I think I have that movie, but I've not seen it. He, I have it in my drive, but I've not seen it. You should look. At, you should look Future. at it. He starred uh, uh, Sean Bean. You know Sean Bean, the guy who played uh, uh, Ned Stark in Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones. You've not seen Game of Thrones. I know Game of Thrones, I know Ned Stark, but who is the man, the guy who did what? Who played Ned Stark in Game of Thrones? Yeah, 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 yeah I know that him. was beheaded. Was, was he the hitter? He was, he was, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I know him. He was the serial killer. Wow. Yeah. And that would be very good. Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I, well, that's a new movie. We won't be yeah, able to talk about that. Yeah, I think it's a 2007 to, movie or so. It's old. Uh, so, we have to do a, a recent movie and uh, maybe a series to talk about next. Sure. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I found you've been great today. So, uh, I owe you one beer, one bottle of beer when we see in Potakot. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. There goes Thanks. Thank you, guys. Bye. Okay, bye.